So we have some demos set up in the hallway. A lot of you have already seen them. There's three platforms. The first one that we're showing off is uh, the Universal Digital Radio Controller, the UDRC, which is a Raspberry Pi hat uh, that has a, an audio codec on it. And the primary market we're uh, pushing it into right now is in conjunction with the Yaesu DR1X uh, repeater um, so that it enables it to do D-Star as well. And we've got it mocked up here um, in an example configuration like might go on a repeater site um, with the uh, Raspberry Pi included. Um, and we will be shipping that hopefully before, the, uh, uh, before Dayton this year and we'll have them on sale there. What is the cable running in from? The cable is running from the repeater. It'll have a 15 pin cable interface that will natively go to the uh, Yaesu repeater and we'll ship you a cable with it when you buy it. It'll also have a mini DIN on it um, so that you can use it with any 9600 baud uh, radio that you've got with a data port on it. Um, and uh, you now don't have to use it for D-Star or anything like that. It's a, a standard sound card into the Raspberry Pi that you'll be able to use for uh, anything you want. We're kind of billing it as a, the signal link. digital radio controller. We actually announced this last year at Hamvention. Got a lot of interest. Who knows about the Yaesu DRX1 repeater deal? Ooh, a surprisingly small number of you. So, a couple of years ago, Yesu launched their fusion solution with no repeaters to talk to it, and they kind of got panned because of that. So, last year, they put together a program to sell you a repeater for $500. It's two mobiles inside the controller in a package. We have one sitting outside. 500 bucks. It's dual band. It's not cross band, but it's two meter or seven or 70 centimeters, and for 500 bucks it's sold like crazy. They've sold thousands of them. Now granted, a lot of people were just buying them to have replaced their old repeater, because it does work analog or fusion, but it's been very popular. And when John Hayes got one of the first ones over a year ago, he looked at the connector on the back with the analog control port and said, I bet I can make the Yesu repeater do D-Star. And I said, well, I would support that just for the PR value. It sounds like fun. <laughs> so among great fanfare, we announced last year that we were going to put D-Star over Yaesu repeaters in multi-modes. So we built a Raspberry, Raspberry Pi 40-pin hat. I'm no longer calling it a 2 or 3 because it's really locked to the number of pins for the header. And we add support for D-Star and packet. It has a controller, has an audio codec, not surprisingly, the same ones in the UDRX, trying to leverage our engineering here. It's got the buck regulator, not surprisingly, the same one in the UDRX. And you could look at this product and say, well, I can do all that with stuff off the shelf. And the answer is, you could. But there's a few people who will cobble one together, and there's a bunch of hands who will look at it and go, that's neat, can you make one for me? And the answer is, no, you got a junk box, go make your own. And, and this solves that niche of how do you get a good idea and how do you make it more prolific? So this is not a technological wonder, it just solves the problem of how do you put the whole thing together. On the DR1X, if you have the old firmware, which is 1.00M through T, you can do two, count up two modes at a time. Well, all by itself, it does analog and fusion. So you can make it do analog and D-star. Or you can make it do D-star and fusion. And because the packet solution uses Dire Wolf, which as far as the repeater's concerned, is analog, it could do D-star and packet. And it has narrowband capabilities in the actual repeater. So you could knock it down to a 12.5K channel and do any two modes. We did testing with three modes, D-Star, Fusion, Analog, which could be four modes. And under certain conditions, the repeater locked up. But Yesu fixed that in their 1.10D firmware release, which was December of last year. So if you have one delivered then, you don't have the bugs in it that caused a lockup, and you can do that. If you have an older one, you can return it to Yesu for updates, and all you pay is the shipping cost to the Yesu facility, which I believe is in Southern California. Yep. And John's already done three of them, and I'm sure they're anxious to hear them. 
Mine was light enough, I've already got the latest version. So that's a product we've come together, and then you can do all modes. Who's doing DMR? A few people. Why? It's different. It's different. <laughs> You're experimenting with it. Okay, so DMR uses its own protocol. So the funny thing is, if you look at Digital Voice, you got D Star, DMR, Yesu Fusion, blah, blah, blah. They are 95% the same in capability. They are 100% incompatible. They're incompatible with the air interface. They're incompatible with the protocol interface. They're incompatible with the network interface. And DMR and Fusion use the same AMBI function, but D Star uses an older one. At least they're all drawing from the same pool, so you can get one stick that'll do them all. The reason you won't hear me talk about, or literature that says we do DMR is DMR requires a license to Motorola. And I have a copy of the license, I've read it. And there's no economic incentive to give Motorola a lot of money to do something we're doing now. Packet. Jeremy's got Dire Wolf running at 9600 packet. He's currently doing APRS receive out there now. So we add that capability to this so you could take one of the ASU boxes and build a 9600 packet repeater. We've also got an add-on for a Mini DIN 6, so you could make a client 9600 baud radio using any radio you've got. Price and delivery. We did a prototype. Um, we got hung up last year because Yesu had the bug problem. And they were talking about changing the way the repeater operates. They didn't end up doing that. They instead fixed it with the firmware and internal upgrade. So we will have general availability by Dayton. It's $89.95, including the cables, the mail mail cable for the DR1X, the mini DIN 6 for the transceiver data port. There's also a pad field in the back for um, if you have a radio that's not one of those two connectors. You can take a connector that fits into it and just solder it to the board. It's all through a hole. So that gets you a way to get in there. On the board is um, transient voltage protection for all the pie pins. Uh, ESD, there's two ESD models. The one that come in chips is designed for manufacturing handling. It's not designed to go out in the field. If you want to put it out there and plug something in the back, you need a higher level of ESD protection. So that's on the board. And as Jeremy said, this doesn't include the Pi, but we will have an image available. So you can take an image, or you can get your own, and you can get a hold of the source code, or you can buy an SD card if you really want a turnkey solution. Options. Well, these aren't really my options, but in configuring the thing mechanically, I wanted to make sure you could, you could add the things which you likely might want. So one of them is a real-time clock, and we've got a little 12-pin header so the clock can drop on there. Because if in your remote, remote location it doesn't have internet access, so you're not running network time protocol, that's something that you might want. You can buy that from somebody else. Touch display. Um, one thing that's been mentioned is in a lot of environments, you know, these pies that they're laying around, they're not very friendly to a typical RF environment. So I've got a rack mount box out there. We put a Pi in it. We put the UDRC on top. We added the real-time clock. We connected the display. And you can run all of those things simultaneously. So Jeremy will build the stuff into the curve. There's a pilot board. It's a little different than the one that's out there now. A little 12-pin header. It has that EEPROM in the middle. Once again, that's the device ID, which is when you plug it in, the Pi boots tells the Pi I have a UDRC hat, so it knows what to do. That's going to be a boon to people who have struggled with getting out of boot and getting everything hooked up correctly. So, in spite of the fact that the UDR has been way overdue, we have now produced and sold thousands of other products. So we have a process to do it. It's Dayton this year. They'll be available next month. The UDRC is and putting on, uh, hopefully not putting on too much of a sales guy hat because I'm the tech guy, but uh, the UBRC is actually nice for more than just the repeater sort of thing because essentially what it boils down to for people in this crowd is it's a really nice Raspberry Pi sound card. 
Uh, that uh, audio codec uh, does uh, sampling up to 96K at 32-bit. Um, so it's a pretty good converter on there um, that's already integrated and ready to go. And if you want to integrate something other than uh, a standard radio into it, there's header pins to do that with. As well as if you want to run you know, modes that you can do into a 9600 pin on a standard data radio, you can do anything you want and have the plug in there all ready to go with it. So um, it's more than just doing D-Star on a DR1X, although that's really cool. Um, it's also a really nice sound card for a uh, Raspberry Pi that's all integrated and ready to go for you. you know, in, in some ways, it kind of does what the signal link does differently. It's like, here's a box, you can plug a radio in, plug it in, and you're done. Instead of like, well, how do I do PTT? We've taken the PTT squelch, we've got some IO pins, we've got lots of stuff to play with there. So it's a really good experimenter's platform.